In our Media Monday segment, Leo Hendry of Intermedia Partners explains why the dispute that led to the blackout could soon be an all too familiar thing for viewers. Leo, great to have you with us. Yeah, nice to be back, Betty. Watched the Oscars last night? I did. What did you think? You know, I thought it was important that a lower budget film won. I also thought it was important that Miss Bigelow won. Uh, you know, it's nice to see a woman finally get the accolade uh, in that category. It, it was a fun Oscar. I thought the hosts were uh, were spectacular, a lot of fun. The duo there, yeah. yeah I thought so, too, although uh, some of it didn't feel, uh, to me, I, the opening remarks, some of it fell flat, I, I, I thought. But in some any case, it, I'm, no, I'm no critic, right? I'm, not, I'm no critic right. of, of comedy. Anyway, okay, Leo, so what has happened between um, ABC and Cablevision? I, I mean, this was pretty big to take that content or not to have that content go on air during, uh, you know, what is it, the second largest, uh, I guess, uh, event the, for, it is. for the U.S.? Yeah. Okay, so who was the bully in this? Well, I, I think that to start, Betty, it's an embarrassing episode uh, when, when two very important companies in this industry can't resolve their differences in a way that doesn't hurt consumers. And in your lead, you said we're going to see this over and over again. Sadly, we are. There's a lot of history here, Betty. For about 30 years, about 60 percent of the channels in the United States, the networks, were owned either by a very powerful cable company or a very powerful broadcaster. And, and all of them did really well. But in the process, some of them were undervalued and some of them were overvalued. Mm -hmm. And if you go after the resolution of the future channel by channel, uh, you're going to have more and more of these embarrassing episodes. In the abstract, did ABC deserve to get paid? Yes, it did. Uh, but it got paid years ago when it put the ESPN family of channels on, which it owns, gets about $4 a month for those, gets nothing for ABC. So in the abstract, ABC, a very powerful, wonderful channel, deserves to get paid. The problem is, again, if you go at it piecemeal, uh, the Cablevision side of this story is, is even more complex. They own a number of channels. Right. Uh, they pay themselves greatly. They, their consumers pay a lot for those channels. Some right. of us believe, in some cases, overpay. So what has to happen is the industries, and I mean both sides, have to sit down and say, look, over these years, a lot of channels got put on the air, some of them overpriced, some of them underpriced. But does this mean that a whole reworking of the price structure between the cable providers and the, ca and the cable networks and the broadcast it, it, networks then? It, it also, it, you should also anticipate it's going to change some of the, the habits and patterns that we, we proffer to the consumer. Uh, you're going to start to hear talk about a la carte. I'm not a f in favor of a la carte. But I am in favor of, of sort of parsing people's choice in, in, more, in more carefully constructed fashion. So instead of the huge package, then you pick which channels that right. you want. But ultimately, that means higher prices for consumers, though, right? Well, it, it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. I hope it doesn't. But take Bloomberg News as an example. This is an amazing little channel. It, oh, it's, not, it's not paid fairly for, for the value of it. it. It's not owned by one of the combines. Mm -hmm. So as it goes into negotiations for what's called carriage fees, it's, it's underrepresented, uh, and so we, that, we have to fix all that. Right, so this a la carte could actually work for, for a channel like well, ours. A la carte oh. in, in batches. Okay, Leo, we'll have to leave it there, but good to talk with you. Thanks good for stopping you. by, Leo Hendry.